Hey everyone, Sam McKay from Enterprise DNA. In a previous video on supply chain management, I went through a technique around how to manage calculations or analysis in a particular scenario, operational scenario, where you might want to analyze information over a number of different dates. And you might want to analyze, say, uh, costs or revenues or transactions or order quantities or, or any any sort of core metric you might want to analyze it how it moves through your operational uh, supply chain through time right um, uh, and what we did was we went through uh, how to create your model so how to create an inact inactive relationships between a date table and a fact table that that has those multiple dates and then how to turn those on and off based on the analysis requirements that you have the main formula technique we used was what uh, what I called the events in progress uh, pattern or formula combination I like to call them and so what we were trying to analyze in this particular case, and I'll just isolate it here so we can analyze it together, is that we're, we're, over time, what we're trying to see in this particular example is how many orders <coughs> or how many um, transactions, sorry, how many transactions uh, do we have open between when they were ordered and when they were delivered? So on any day, how many orders are in transition? So how many have been ordered? They could be sort of like online orders, for example. Uh, and how many are they have, have been ordered but haven't been delivered yet? And so you'll see here that it obviously isn't a constant number. It goes up and down. So, you know, over this time here, we might have had a, a, an influx of orders and we're just waiting to deliver these you know, out to our customers somehow. And what's great about this is that you can um, have a look at this metric based on the way we've set it up um, dynamically. You can look at this metric across all of your, say, warehouses that you might have uh, or locations where you might be storing your inventory. And you can also isolate, you know, what I'm doing here is I'm clicking around um, to different warehouses so we can actually see the demands on particular warehouses for particular goods as well. We can dive even further into you know, what is going on through our supply chain for very specific things that we are looking to manage um, or, or contrast that metric to, okay? And so it all comes down to two things mainly. It's mainly about getting your model right, it's getting it set up like this when you have multiple dates, but also then utilizing that correct uh, formula pattern or formula combination to actually get the insight uh, correct. Now, what I want to showcase here more so is how we can extend this even further because not only is this great information, you know, di in a dynamic way to drill into specific aspect aspects of your supply chain, but also maybe you want to optimize or and compare your um, calculations of within your supply chain to different time frames. So what we can do is we can layer on time intelligence techniques to be able to analyze how our uh, orders in progress in this particular example compared to a different time frame. And so we can see uh, are the demands, you know, we can see are the demands higher or lower or is there a consistent demand over a particular time? You know, this could be a seasonal thing. This could be a sales and marketing type um, analysis that we do as well. You know, say for example, just a just a real world example. Say for instance, you run a marketing campaign, and you uh, and you've run it. You run it a number of different times, and you see that your demand at that time really scales up. And you can you could and you could see the demands on the rest of the business via your supply chain by running this sort of analysis. And so then, what you could do in the future is that you can have somewhat of an understanding based on this analysis of how you might need to scale things up within your business to be able to cope with that demand, uh, that increase in demand via that marketing program. Now, what um, that's just really that's a really good example of where this is great. But what you could also do is also just compare, right? And so you you might want to if you do run these marketing campaigns multiple times, well, then you can overlay uh, the different uh, timeframes that these were run to be able to analyze or get a sort of medium 
um, or average over time of, of sort of what uptick you get with, with a successful marketing campaign. But basically what I want to show you here is how you can very easily overlay time intelligence calculations to what we have done. And so you'll see here, this is relatively straightforward based on what we've done so far. All I'm doing is I'm, I'm just branching out from our orders in progress calculation, right? Everything is embedded into that to be able to manage the analysis over our data model. And then all I've done is I've extended that insight to be able to jump back to a different time frame. In this particular case, I'm jumping back to a previous quarter and I'm using the date add function to do that. And so then when I overlay that to, um, I'll just make sure I'm selected on the right one. So I'll select on this particular visualization. When I overlay that here, we are now comparing one quarter to the next. So this might, this may or may not be relevant for your particular uh, sales cycle or your supply chain, but this is just an example of how you can utilize time intelligence when you just think more broadly around what sort of insights that you might want from, from supply chain related data or any data with multiple dates for that matter. This is not just isolated to supply chain. So you can see here that this um, darker blue line here now is the last quarter results. And so you can see that the current um, time frame within the current context, so quarter three, 2019, seems to be slightly lagging behind what happened last quarter. So it'd be interesting to know why that is actually the case. And what I've done down here, just to branch it out even further, is I've created another measure where I've just uh, tried to showcase the difference, right? Showcase the difference between these two. And this is this is just me simply branching out even further from our initial core insights, right? And this is this measure branching methodology that I love to talk about because I think it's just such a great way, way to develop high quality scalable reports with Power BI. And so all I've done is I've gone order progress minus the order of progress last quarter or whatever time frame you actually input for that. And so now I can get a really quick snapshot of how things are going versus say a different time frame. And again, it's all dynamic. And so say we want to isolate specific warehouses, which might be in totally different locations around um, uh, around the world or within, within your own geography. And so you can very quickly s see, okay, well, um, you know, what's going on versus X or versus this quarter. Or you could also compare, you know, versus the average where how you know the app you could over, average over time so there's many different ways you can take this right you can also compare versus different warehouses as well and so um yeah look i think this is this is just high quality high quality time related analysis that you probably you know my, my guess is has historically been very difficult to achieve in any in, in in any scalable way and with power bi by by getting the setup right and the model uh, the, the formula techniques right it's relatively seamless in my view relatively achievable relatively seamless and immensely scalable you know because you can um implement this technique over your data once and all of a sudden you know you can find a huge amount of insights just very very quickly say you wanted to even drill down by particular say products for example well you could even just overlay this with a product type filter and then drill into how the products perform or product categories perform over time within your supply chain and not only that um just to finish off here this here is just looking at transactions. Maybe you want to look at, say, inventory costs over time. So you can measure your cash requirements or you can forecast your cash requirements, right? So another, um, you know, if you're running a marketing campaign and your demand, you know, is, is significantly higher than your day-to-day -day, uh, your, your day business that you run, well, then you're obviously going to have much huger demands on your cash requirements, right? Because you're going to have to bring in more inventory um, uh, to, to fulfill your orders or to um, get more stock out into your stores. And so um, and it might take a while in some cases for the cash to come in. And so there's so, so many um, insights that can be gathered from this sort of analysis that can add value to many parts of a business. Uh, and, you know, a lot of it is just, you know, and it all begins uh, with sort of optimizing your supply chain, but then you know that that touches upon many different aspects of of of, of most businesses.
okay so look really good chat um and this one really enjoyed talking about sort of the business aspects the business intelligence aspects of of running um this type of analysis in power bi so hopefully you enjoyed it as well definitely throw the video a like if you enjoyed it got a lot out of the content uh, and um, don't forget to subscribe to enterprise dna uh, tv and also if you do want to view the entire uh, workshop that was on supply chain management it was it was a member only event um, but if you want to go to enterprise dna online which is at portal.enterprisedna.co it is located within a course module called scenario method workshops and these are our member only ones and you can you can you can enroll in just this particular course um, for for a small price but uh, i would recommend checking out membership if you want to get the all access pass because that will give you access to absolutely everything we have um, on our education platform okay all the very best everyone look forward to talking to you soon